through that, we'll talk a little bit about the budget challenge and the budget process and moving forward. And um, then we'll, um, if there's any other discussion anybody wants to have before we leave, we should try to get out of here by 3 o'clock so we can get back to the Hall of Justice for the, um, for the full board meeting. I don't think we need to go around the room and introduce ourselves. We don't know each other. And, we, and John, we've worked with John enough, so um, I don't want to take up time to do that. But I will turn it over to John right now. And feel free to ask any questions during the presentation. Thanks. Thanks, Bonnie. Um, you know, last year, uh, the sheriff and I were talking just a couple of minutes ago. It seemed like as I listened to Eric's presentation last year and your comments and your questions that the data that he brought to you pretty much confirmed what you already knew. And my guess is that's kind of what's going to happen this year. So I wanted to start out and just ask you, what do you think? What are you seeing? What are you hearing um, economically for Muskegon County, for the state of Michigan, for the entire country? What are you anticipating for the next year or two? Slow improvement. We're hearing that some of the industrial is picking up. We're going to be behind the rest of the state, and the state's going to be behind the rest of the country. But it is slowly inching up. I think manufacturing will come back, but it will take longer than just the next couple of years. The concentration will be because energy is going to become more plentiful and we have water, and uh, that's going to make a big difference. Any others? I think the data you're going to see is going to pretty much confirm what, what you've already heard and what you're seeing and where you think we're going. Just give you a little extra ammunition. Um, you're enjoying this 80 degree weather this week? Uh, nah. <laughs> I, it, it's funny, I have found myself in the last few days lulled into this really strange sense that winter's over, summer's here. And, and it, it's July, and it's going to stay that way. And then after, after I think about it, I kind of stop myself and go, wait a minute, wait a minute, get real. We all know there's more March, there's lots of April, we're going to get some cool weather again. And then I got to thinking about that in economic terms. In the, you know, we all, well, most of us lived through the auto recession of the early 80s. And then things got roaring in the 90s, and it was really good. And I, did you find in the 90s that you got lulled into that same kind of a sense of, boy, this is really good, and it's just going to keep going, kind of like we have been with the weather the last few days? Some, some shaking their heads no. Didn't, didn't let ourselves get sucked into it. Um, yeah, and that's where we are. We're in that, in that downturn and starting to inch our way back. Um, I'm just going to start out with at, at the national level, then we'll come down to the state level, talk a little bit about some uh, budget projections, and uh, and then some things that relate directly to counties that Eric is seeing in the, in the governor's proposal. Um, stronger job growth the last couple of months. Um, gross domestic product was up in the fourth quarter. Um, disposable income up a little bit. A little bit of growth in consumer spending. And motor vehicle output, that's an interesting one to me. I, I'm not sure I expected to see that quite so quickly. Uh, any car buffs in here? Anybody that reads like car driver or motor trend? I'm the only, almost the only one. Um, it's been surprising to me the last few months, the level of optimism in that industry. Um, people are getting excited about selling some cars and they're getting excited about product. And so I think we're seeing that, that critical industry in Michigan picking up maybe a little quicker than, than a lot of us thought it was. The personal savings rate, um, you know, Eric's comment there that it remains high at 4.5%. It seems like I remember from too many years ago um, some discussion in some economics classes about for a society as a whole, 
if you could maintain about a four or five percent savings rate on a regular basis, that was a pretty good place to be. And the interesting observation with this particular rate currently is that when we're in a period of a poor economy and trying to work our way back out of it, while that's a healthy thing, it's kind of a two-edged sword. Um, our manufacturing industries, our, our economy in general, would like to see us spending a little more of that money to increase the job growth as opposed to uh, the savings. So kind of a mixed bag on, on what otherwise we would think of as a pretty good thing. Um, as, as you have observed, uh, no real signs of a sustained econ economic recovery, um, small growth. Inflation remains low. <coughs> Do you believe that one? No. Oh, no. <laughs> that will happen until the perception that if you are doing a little better comes along and everybody who's been saving up, boom, will happen all at once. The, the whole interest rates and the stated that the consumer price index measurement of inflation remains low. Um, and I've heard some talk about uh, a need to create a new inflation index that doesn't put so much emphasis on the one time, long term purchases like cars and houses and some of those products. You know, we're all feeling it with the gas pump. Um, if you do some of the grocery shopping in your family, you're seeing it in, in some of those products. And so there's, while the official inflation rate is pretty low, um, what some people would call the real inflation rate of the products that we buy on kind of a weekly basis um, would be a little bit higher. So we're starting to get that pressure that, um, that may very well over the next few years lead us into some higher level of inflation. Um, home market still fairly weak. Fiscal policy, I had to look up contraction here. I hadn't used that word in a long time. Um, really aimed more at, um, at, at shrinking government, at um, not growing the economy quite so fast, trying to keep inflation in check is, is what the, the point of that word is. Um, and, and the expectation that growth will be fairly moderate with some small um, reductions in unemployment. I brought this slide back from last year. Um, that's the annual job losses in Michigan for the last 10 years. And I just Kind of soak those numbers in for a minute as you go down through each year. Um, the total 890,000, or about 20% in the state of Michigan over that decade. And I threw that one back in there just to provide a little perspective to this next number 65,000 job growth in 2011. That's about 7% of those jobs back. Not a big amount, but it, it seems to indicate that we've bottomed out and, and beginning to see some growth. Um, Eric's observation of where that growth has happened, I thought was pretty interesting, um, tends to be in high wage industries like manufacturing, and the low education industries have outpaced the high education industries. Kind of the opposite of what you know, everybody said, the growth, and maybe this is true nationally, but the growth is going to be in those high education jobs. We need to educate, 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 educate. And while that's true, we are seeing that return of manufacturing where there isn't quite as, as great a need for that high level of education. Um, projections in 2012 and 2013, um, about 30,000 more jobs over those couple of years. Um, and the projections include some weaker growth in the national economy as a whole. So still inching our way upwards, but not, not terribly quickly. And if, if you have questions as we go along or comments, feel free to, to jump in. Um, new entrance to the labor force at the same time we're creating a few jobs. Um, again, the outlook there is that we're not going to see a big change in that overall employment rate. 
personal income, however, um, the anticipation that, that those who have jobs will see some growth in their, in their income. Which then hopefully will translate into some buying power. I, that's my, you know, on the inflation part, I don't see job, I don't see wages going up anytime soon. And I don't see, you know, I don't see where that's going to come from. And yet, like you say, food, gas, and everything else keeps climbing. And I'd like to hope that salaries will increase, but I don't see it. I, another element that I think contributes to that over the next, this is probably longer term than just the next couple of years, um, will be retirements. Um, when you look at percentages of the population, I wish I had a, a chart to show you, but the percentages of our population during that older age group, um, which a lot of us are getting close to, um, are, are higher than they've been over the last 40 or 50 years and the percentages in the lower age groups are lower. Um, it's, in, in seeing that trend over the last 20 or 30 years has caused me to look ahead and think, yeah, you know, retirement at 62 or 65, if I can afford it, sounds nice. But if those kind of numbers continue, um, there may actually be some demand for employees that would cause some of us to decide to work part-time rather than retire at an early age. Um, and, and I'm thinking that that may be where some of that upward pressure on the, on the wages and salaries might come from. Um, that coupled with, um, usually it's cheaper to pay an additional, to pay a current employee a little more. That's not really a wage and salary increase so much as it is the overtime of a situation, but it's usually over the past few years it might be cheaper to pay the overtime than it is to take on the new employee. But overtime isn't a wage increase. Correct. Correct. So it actually defeats the purpose of a living wage. If you have to work double your hours to make a living wage, you have increased your standard living. All right. Yep. It's an increase in spendable dollars, but it's not an increase in wage. Yeah. Yeah. I think there societal shift in benefits, which can be replaced at least partially in wages, if not be in benefits. So you might see an increase in that, but not an increase in the overall life spot. <laughs> okay. So you're saying that a company would maybe choose to reduce their contribution to the benefits because those have become relatively more expensive and in exchange pay, if I'm the company, I'm gonna maybe save five bucks on the benefits so I'll pay you an extra two. Could, could be a part of that also. Um, state budget. Uh, general fund and school aid fund revenues are currently up slightly from last year. Um, and as of February, uh, revenues are tracking pretty close to the consensus forecast. I know I've seen a little in the news, they're up, they're down, uh, but overall uh, staying fairly close. Income tax refunds uh, have been a bit higher than was expected. And sales tax collections much higher than expected and largely due to motor vehicles. And that's been, you know, that's a pretty typical thing when it comes to recessions. Um, we postpone those larger purchases and we start getting to the point where that car is just getting to be in a condition where it's time to replace it. Um, auto sales tend to pick up fairly well. Um, the budget proposal so far for fiscal year 13 at the state level uh, beginning balance is just a little over half a billion. Uh, revenues anticipated at just over nine. Uh, some savings on revenue sharing. That none of us like to see in there. And uh, looks like a total of about $9.2 billion for the general fund for 13. The executive budget proposal um, 
8.6 with another about 400 million in some one-time expenditures. And Eric said that was largely transfers from general fund to school aid fund. And uh, that would come up with spending of about 9.1 billion in the general fund next year. And just for a little perspective, uh, the state general fund budget 2000-2001 was in this same neighborhood, a little higher. And I remember doing a projection a couple of years ago. If you had taken that 2000 general fund budget figure and increased it according to inflation up through 2009-2010, we'd be up in the $13 billion range. So we really have made some reductions in, in general fund spending at the state level. Same kind of projections looking ahead to 14. Uh, beginning balance uh, smaller. Uh, revenues projected again at about 9.2 uh, with the total expenditures then a little below 9. Uh, executive budget expected to be about in that same neighborhood. The one-time shifts are smaller, so we're uh, about $8.9 billion projected for 14. Which I think says to us, um, don't expect that we're going to see a whole lot more money uh, coming through to pay for courts and uh, jail reimbursement and revenue sharing and, and some of those kinds of things. Some changes in the structure of the budget at the state level, uh, <coughs> kind of shuffling the groupings of departments, I think, for, uh, just in the way they look at it. I'll just let you go through those. And those will become relevant as we look at some numbers on the next. So the budget changes for 13, uh, total state spending from state race resources increased, I think <coughs> that percentage earlier, about 1.3%. Uh, where is that going? Education up almost 10%, uh, with a lot of that being a general fund transfer to K-12. Debt service is up almost 8%. Health and human services, the proposal is down for. Uh, resource protection up 11 and public safety up about three and a half. And again, that's the that's the executive proposal for the budget for 13. We've still got the legislative process to work through. Uh, historically, that would get finished in about August or September. Um, if you're looking back two or three years, uh, maybe by the middle of October. And if last year proves to be the new benchmark. Um, by the time school is out, that process will be finished. And I guess that one remains to be seen. I haven't, I, any of you have a legislative crystal ball, heard anything about how that process is gonna go this year? Mickey Knight is indicating a time schedule to finish in June. Early June will be the conference. They're gonna, they're gonna keep up with last year get it done and move on to other things. Like an election. Uh, for 14, spending down just a little from 13. Um, education down, but that reflects the no general fund support to K-12. The school aid fund will stand on its own according to this projection. Uh, general government down just a bit, health and ser human services up a little, resource protection down, and public safety and defense up just a little bit. You know, the one change on there that really, two that really are striking, one is that general fund to K-12 um, increasing education this year and then dropping that the following year. And the other one was the resource protection, which if we go back is Ag and Rural Development, DNR, and DEQ, um, up 11% in 13. Those departments have taken some pretty good hits. But then down 8% in 14. And, and I don't know the details as to why that 
at kind of a roller coaster projection. As far as employees, uh, total spending on employees is up with the number of employees down. Um, you can see the difference in full-time equivalents from 12 to 13. And that represents a nearly $100 million increase, and 70 million of that is retirement and other post-employment benefits. Those costs just continue to climb. Revenue sharing, the constitutional revenue sharing, of course, is formula-driven. Uh, projection for 13 is just about 700 million, and that's up from fiscal year 12. The Economic Vitality Incentive Program, which I think Bonnie is going to talk about um, in a little while, um, that's the one that was aimed at cities, villages, and townships last year. Uh, no change projected in that one. The County Incentive Program is a similar program that's been proposed now for 13 for counties. Uh, and the projection there is uh, an increase of about $10 billion from spending in fiscal year 12. Um, and again, these are, this is the information at this point on this proposal, um, which is yet to get through the budget process, and we'll see just how that shakes out. Um, similar to the program for cities, villages, and townships, 61 of the 83 counties will be eligible. The reason the other 22 are not is that they are still drawing from their revenue sharing reserve fund and are not yet back in the revenue sharing process of the state of Michigan. Now, where is Muskegon County in that? So we um, exhausted our uh, reserve in 2010. Okay, so you're, you're back on the board. Um, the plan aims to provide some accountability and transparency with a citizen's guide, a performance dashboard, and a three-year budget. Some consolidation of services proposal aims to expand or extend cooperation. And as I talked with Eric on that, his understanding is that it really is aimed at expanding as opposed to rewarding what you're, what you're already doing. Um, and then some employee compensation features in terms of listing contracts and capping um, employer costs for employees. Some of the details there, uh, the first bullet point has to do with retirement contributions. Um, the program aims to, uh, to cap that for new hires at a 10% employer contribution, which to me then also implies a defined contribution plan as opposed to a defined benefit. Um, maximums on the pension multiplier, uh, some final average compensation figures, uh, caps and, and standards there. And then the health care premium for new hires, uh, contribution of minimum of 20% for employees or an employer benefit that's competitive. There's apparently some provision in there. If you've got a plan worked out that's, uh, that's already very competitively priced and you're able to accomplish it without requiring that high of a contribution, then that is this just a proposal? Or this is this is a proposal in the budget process. Now, 1.5 percent. Does that take effect October 1st? It's. I can't. I have PPAM data that says that the total amount of money that the state has is about 1,500. Go to conference committee because of some of the language issues. The um, what was the question, Tom? About the 1.5%. 1. 1. 1. Does that take effect for starting oh, with October 1st or is it retroactive for some of this figure 37 years, for instance? Um, it, it is for all employees who are on a defined benefit plan. There is a question of when it actually takes effect because we do have to report that we're complying sometime in 2013, I'm thinking it's April of 2013, but that it will, it has to be in effect by then. But if you were past that date, you still get the 1.5% of all of your years? 
No, no, no. There would be a bridge benefit. That's our understanding, that there would be a bridge benefit, that the years that you have would stay at the same, but the first years from that point forward sticking a stake in the ground would be 1.5. Yeah, but if I, just so I understand this, you're saying that the people, like, in, the current multiplier is two and a half. Yes. So if you've got 25 years in, you get the two and a half. For the 25 years. But going forward, you'd be right. Right, yeah. Right. right. Yeah. If you're 26 now, you're accumulating at 1.5. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Except we are paying extra out of our paychecks for the 2.5. We're paying for the, um, you're paying for your retirement contribution. So not necessarily for that rate. You know, it's just whatever. There's different, um, and the other um, issue is is that it affects all employees, and so those that are under contract, it would not affect them until their contracts opened in 2014. But it would not change like the rate issue. So can I just again? Sure. <clears throat> How, is he, how are they doing that? They're just saying that's the way it is? And yes, they are. And if you do not, um, this kind of goes into what I'm talking about. If you do not comply, you will lose a portion. They've divided up the revenue sharing into three elements. One is the transparency, two is the consolidation, and three is the employee compensation. For Muskegon County, they um, are allocating 2.6 plus ma uh, million dollars for revenue sharing for 2013, fiscal year 2013. For each one of the, uh, the elements of this um, incentive program, it's worth $899,000. If you do not comply, the transparency one, fine, no problem, we can do that. The um, consolidation, the first year you put together a plan. The second year will be the harder part on the consolidation plan, because the first year is just a plan. You have to submit a plan. The second year you have to show progress. And then the employee compensation has to be in effect. That's worth $900,000 to the county. If we do not comply, then um, we will lose $900,000 of our revenue share. I'm just curious what, so okay, so, Say, for example, the deputies or some a larger union. Um, well, they want, they don't have to do it till their their contracts right, open again. Two thousand fourteen. Yeah. I mean, well, um, then they have to give us nine hundred thousand yeah. dollars worth of savings, and we won't do it. They'll give us uh, nine hundred thousand comes to about seventeen county positions. So, but we've got a sheriff that's going to lead and. They're going to say, <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be part of the big lives. The sheriff and, and I will work together and they, they'll end up saying yeah. thank you at the end. <laughs> You've already got me real happy, thanks. <laughs> and then the 240 hours of paid leave of using the calculation of your client compensation would again be retired after the April 1st date? Yeah. And we don't know that. We don't know, we're not clear what the date is, but the, the way it reads is an April 1st date. The, currently, you can use 480 hours towards your calculation. Yeah. No, it's only 480. And um, so they cut that in half. They cut that in half. Yes? It's all employees. I understand that, but if you have some that have over 35 years, they go back to 1.5. Yes, yes. Yeah, every, oh, they use 25. Every year beyond that, it's calculated. Yeah. Except they're already there. They're, they're at 2.5 now. Everybody's at 2.5, whether you're 5 years, 10 years, 25 years. There's, there will be a bridge where, um, well, I'll use myself as an example. For three years, and then going forward, it would be um, the next year the bridge would go to 1.5. So, 
So a three-year employee, it would affect a three-year employee, it would affect a 37-year well, employee. 30, I mean, once you have to be 32 years, you're in, you're already at the maximum of 80%. So it doesn't really matter what they do after that, right? That's, that's my question, Brian, is people that are already at the maximum after 32 years, they're not going to get a reduction, are they? What are you at? The maximum doesn't make the it's all employees That's must be at 1.5 multiplier. It doesn't exempt, it doesn't talk about anything about the number of years. It's, it I know, but the one point, says, I said the 1.5% doesn't take effect until April 1st. I don't know, we don't you know, know that. We don't know when it has to take effect. We will know that in June because they will pass the budget. And because there are, there's, there's conversations going on in the House, they've had more conversations on this than in the Senate. It's passed through the Senate without any changes. What committee? Do you know what committee is going to I do, but I do. I think in the office. So I did, I did provide you a sheet that kind of outlined it. It's a sheet that kind of administrators are using. It's a, yes. Is that Drake's language? I didn't see any. Where is that? The bridge language, that's kind of coming from MERS, as to what, how they would address it. Yeah, it's not, they, the, it's not, that's us talking with MERS and how would we do this, and they use a term that we would have a bridge back Oh, yeah. But the FAC would affect everyone. The three, three yeah. final year FAC. Yeah. We got all the final details. No, and it's going to be in the conference committee, and we probably will know by June because that's their their plan. Did someone have their hand up? Did someone else have a question? Yeah, the, the language, folks, is in, in dispute right now because you can interpret it fifty different ways. We even contacted Ottawa County, like you know, this is how we're interpreting, it. and they're pretty much agreeing with us. It's just loosely worded, I think, intentionally. It's, yeah, and it's loosely worded, much like um, much like the the public act for the um, health insurance one was as well. That was very loosely worded, and was passed like that. Um, the other, the the last part of it was the ten percent. We haven't figured out what the ten percent remaining. They say if you do not comply, they will um, take ten percent of your remaining dollars. But the three elements add up to the, all the money. So um, we, we, I keep contacted Iowa County for me to see if they had clues to what the remaining meant. And, um, we don't know what that means either. So we'll, as we get that information, we'll keep you informed. Yeah. Okay, be sure this was staff. Oh, definitely. Because, okay. yeah. So I've got a staff meeting. Yeah, now. it's and out there. And it's, been, it's been out yeah. there since the governor released his executive budget. Yeah. If, if I could just say one other thing. You know, in the beginning, the governor was talking about, many people were talking about structural changes in the system. This is a This is one you can actually point at and say this is a structural change. Because as a commissioner, um, I had no idea when I first was elected that that 2.5% multiplier existed. My wife's a retired teacher. It's 1.5%. And, and I thought that was pretty good. You know, to be honest with you, I mean, you know, it was fair. Um, then this 20% thing, and well, maybe that's just the way it is. And But when people are retiring after many years and actually making more than they made when they worked, not on that, but they still get Social Security, and then most people, you know, do something for themselves. And it's just not wrong with it. I mean, it's like we can't afford it. I, I could see that 10 years ago, but it's just the way it was. I thought, well, I guess it works. But it doesn't work. Doesn't work anymore. We can't afford it. Demographics have shifted so quickly. So here's some real structural change that you can point to and say that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, the devil's in the details. Right, and that's something that we need to be clear when we talk to staff too, because we don't want people exiting and retiring and getting out. I mean, we won't know until June. <laughs> As you We won't know, so you're free to share this with your employees, but I don't want you to cause panic to your employees. 
So, um, <laughs> I've interrupted your... <laughs> That's quite all right. You and with the health care premium, actually I was a little concerned about the health care premium part of that because we did not do the 20%, but our package was actually equal to the 80-20, okay. and we got the con we got the consensus from the employees that we would have got. We actually got more than we would have got had we done 80-20. I like that language. That I have a, that's the first I've yeah. seen that language. Because we were going to go with that we were at the hard cap. Because we're actually above the, yeah. And we do have a better package than what that was. And that may very well just be Eric's way of describing right. Well, we'll go with that. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much, Bonnie, because you were able to enlighten a lot more on those details than I would. I want to get back to category two on your consolidation of services. Is the state going to make it easier for us to consolidate services? I can't I, answer. I mean, right now, the way it's said, I mean, if somebody doesn't want to, or we're stuck. I think that it's not like they go out and say, look, we're going to consolidate. I actually think that there is some legislation that is on, is out there that they're talking about changing some language to allow that. but. That isn't something that they're um, talking about. They're just asking for a plan right now. So you're right. But how do you create a plan if you don't have the legislation to back it? Well, the le I mean, the legislation is in regards to unions and other issues that stand in the way, but um, that people believe stand in the way. As I read that language, I don't believe that it completely stands in the way. I think the unions stand in the way. I think it's the... I, the, the municipalities themselves have their own rights, and they, they, they're gonna, they don't have to give them up to Eric. And as I read the language, I saw it as um, the pay issue. There's a pay issue thing that, you know, and there's a concern of not saving if the consolidation doesn't create savings. And so, from my perspective, consolidation isn't always for savings. Eventually, there will be savings. But yeah, they, yeah I can't answer for the savings. I, I was just curious because right. that was. Right. Does, does a consolidation include between counties? Any. Any. And that, you know, um, that's what we'll talk about w when the presentation is done. It's more about some of those things. It could be internal too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, public private. A decision can uh, and a bill handling compensation, monetary right. compensation right. to those involved in the monetary. It's the same as they're doing with with the wages now. They're saying if you don't do it, it's going to cost you X dollars. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. that's the kind of thing that has to be yeah. done. So that each individual unit has the right to choose, but they know that it is a choice between not just where you are and something different, it's a choice between two something different. So, and then, then we'll be more like that. Tell them. No, there's nothing. Yeah, but if they don't agree to participate, then it hurts the other one because they can't participate. Well, you can always offer them all right. <laughs> I, <guess. laughs> I think they're just looking for plans at this point. Well, for, for the counties, for the counties, it is just a plan. For the cities, villages, and townships, this is their second year, and so now they have to submit progress on their plan. For our second year, we'll have to show progress. But I think that there's a lot of opportunities. I don't see a lot of obstacles in our way um, if we all put our heads together and come up with a plan. I mean, it has to be a realistic plan, but we also need to work towards having a even better plan the following year with the progress that we're making. But um, yeah, so we'll- But you can also identify barriers to implementing a plan, right? right? right. And that's an option, and so that's how yeah. it's kind of popped out. Is yeah. I had about three thoughts while you were talking. Um, one is this is one of those situations where Bonnie's communication with other county administrators is critically important. Your communication with legislators is critically important. Your keeping in the loop with Mac is critically important. This stuff that's in the mill, um, and it's a it's a messy process, and some of it may be pretty much preordained with one party controlling the process. But 
to the extent that you can get in and, and influence some of those decisions, um, you've got that opportunity to do so, and I'd really encourage you to do that. Cooperation. Um, some lessons that are pretty clear from the research. Some cooperation will yield uh, better service and won't save you any money. Some cooperation will save you some money. Oftentimes, it takes time before you begin to see the savings. And some of the services that are most likely to yield savings are the ones that are quite equipment intensive. It seems like fire is one of the one of the easiest ones to, to see some dollar savings because over a particular geographic area we can get away with four million dollar trucks instead of six. But even then, once you've already bought the trucks, uh, it takes a little while to see the same. Uh, we had, what, 20, 20 years ago we had one, now we have five. Five, five trucks. Five trucks. trucks, yeah. And no higher buildings. I mean, so, and then there are other issues that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not a county department, don't mind. Right. I mean, you don't want it. <laughs> that was, and that was, that leads me back to the third point. I think as counties, we're in a fortunate position with this program to be able to see what's happening with cities, villages, and townships because they're a year ahead of us in the process. We may not like what we're seeing, but uh, it, it, it's not quite such a new thing as, as we go through it, assuming that it winds up being pretty much identical. No, I'm not even going to go there. I think it went to sleep. <laughs> First time I've used it. Um, this is the, the, the publicly funded health care contribution act we talked about. This is the one that already was enacted uh, with the 10%. Back on that um, yeah, this is just more detail on, and I think Bonnie pretty well covered where you're at on this in terms of the, the hard cap. And, uh, there is the option, uh, two thirds vote to, to opt out. Of um, some other things that are in that budget proposal that may impact you are a competitive grant assistance program to assist with intergovernmental cooperation. Uh, proposal to put 20 million in for 2013 uh, as a one-time deal. Uh, a new Office of Fiscal Responsibility in Treasury with 10 FTEs to assist in local fiscal crises. Uh, Four and a half million dollars there for 2013 and the intent is that that one would be ongoing. Uh, there's also uh, business attraction and economic gardening dollars proposed, $100 million ongoing. Uh, talent fund for job training, $15 million, and that's new. Um, and some arts and cultural grants, uh, small, uh, $3.5 million, but some effort at least to help to prime that economic pump and, uh, and get some things. And that's all I've got. Um, if and when you need to contact me, email is the best way to do it. Um, I'm in the process of moving my office from the Wexford County Extension Office in Cadillac to the Grand Traverse County Office up in Traverse City, so I'm not even going to try to get you the address and phone number. I don't have those memorized yet. Any other questions? I'll turn it back over to Bonnie then. Thank, Thank you. you, John. Um, I just thought we'd spend some time talking about the um, fiscal year 2000.